Okay guys, so today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna be doing a testing video. So, I saw a video that eFix did and it was on the addition of water to a damaged cable while doing an insulation resistance test. Now I thought it was super interesting and I wanted to put it in like a practical situation for, especially for people in Australia, where we have a fault and the fault is most likely due to um, a rodent who's chewed or eaten a cable. Now the, they chew the outside of the um, insulation sometimes down to the bare copper. Now, just because they've chewed the insulation doesn't mean you're gonna get a bad reading when you do an IR test. And it's sometimes not until moisture or ingress is, um, I guess, added onto the cable where they get the fault. So you might not have any tripping until there might be moisture in the air or water gets onto that damaged cable. So I wanted to simulate that in the test to actually showcase how it can be, I guess, seen in real life, in real life circumstances. Say you go to a house, there's a fault, um, and they call up and say, oh, the power's tripping. Now say two hours later, they reset the breaker and it, and it stays on. And it's probably one of the hardest things to find, right? What are you gonna do? You get your tester out, you're gonna go around, you're gonna do your IR testing, and it passes. So to you, that cable's fine. But most likely in the wall somewhere, there's the damaged cable. Now when the moisture builds up, whether it's from rain or a leak or something like that, builds up and, and gets onto that cable, then that's when you get your fault. So I'm gonna simulate that with a piece of cable here, or, and I'll do an IR test on it, and then I will damage the cable and do the same IR test and show you that the reading will be the same. And then I will add water into the experiment as well and then show how that does affect the reading. Um, I'm gonna be using the Fluke 1507 insulation resistance tester. Now, these testers are really good. This is a, this is a good entry level um, digital insulation resistance tester, you know? Like if you didn't wanna go out and buy yourself a multifunction tester, this is a good place to start if you want to get off the old analog style meters. This is a really good meter. It's super, super handy and easy and it's got a little stand on the back. So it's got a um, push button test on the probe as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a handy meter to have. Um, also it does continuity. So um, we can use this today and voltage as well, sorry. But I'll be using this today. I'll show you the test and then we'll go from there. Firstly to start, we're just gonna strip a bit of cable. And then we're gonna make sure at the other end that it's just split apart. So they're not touching, so it's not gonna give us a false reading. Now, we're gonna set up our meter here. So we have our test lead here. The right hand side is for testing insulation. The left hand side is for when you're testing continuity. So you plug this into here. So, the black lead comes with a clip. Now two of these would be handy for this test, but we're not gonna do that. So just for this test, we're gonna test between line and earth. We're gonna make sure that our tester is set on the 500 volt scale. This is your test probe here, okay? So I'll do a quick test here, where I test to that. And we've got zero mega ohms. Now, when doing insulation resistance testing, your pass rate needs to be equal to or greater than one mega ohm. Obviously zero would be a fail. And you can tell that by them um, are touching, obviously. Now, come under here, get a good connection. We've got a pass, 550 mega ohms. Top of the scale, pass. Now, we will simulate a damaged cable. You 
can see there, copper's exposed, copper showing, insulation's all the way down. Now they're not touching at this point, okay? That's a pretty, like, if you've been in a roof and you've seen what a ratchet cable looks like, it's usually down the side and they've usually taken a bit of insulation out down the side, a few nicks over it. Sometimes I've seen it where it's the bare copper the whole way through. Now we'll repeat the test, exactly the same. Now we're testing insulation resistance. So technically the ins insulation is damaged. So you'd think that, oh, the test will be different, but it's exactly the same. Now, what we'll do is add another element. Scooting glass here. Now, a good way of putting it is say, there's a leak and it's just dripping onto the cable and it's just slowly running down and there's some water getting on there, a bit of moisture. You know? Now that might be in the weather for a little bit. Now we repeat the same test. And that is a fail. Point zero 0.03. So that is a fail. Now, Say through the day, the sun comes out, cable dries out. Just a little bit, not fully. Are we gonna get a different reading? Oh, see it's a little bit better. We're up around 150, so that is a pass. There is still moisture though. And if we go fully, as dry as we can make it. We're still sitting at a lower reading than original. So there's still probably moisture that's tracked in through the copper and come up. After a few hours, that'll probably dry out. By the time you get to the fault, you're probably gonna get there, put your tester on the end, test it, it's gonna be fine. Now you're not gonna be able to find that fault until the water comes back again. Like I said, eFix did um, replicate his exact test and that's where I got the idea from, but I wanted to put it into perspective for Australians for, I guess, to see the faults that I guess you don't think of when you go to a house and someone calls up and says, oh, I've got a tripping circuit and then you get there and it's not tripping. Thinking about that moisture, it doesn't even have to have rained. Sometimes you can get moisture from if it's within a bathroom and, and the um, the steam coming out from an exhaust fan, that's gonna still also give you and, and change that reading on there. Yeah, well, insulation resistance is probably one of the most important tests we do. And it's also something that when you do go to a fault, it's probably one of the first things we'll, we'll test. Now, this simulates the exact reason why you can't always trust an IR test because it's not gonna show, show you exactly what's going on with the cable. You, you would, if that was in the wall hidden, you're not gonna be able to see it, right? And if you t test it and you're getting a good reading, how are you gonna know it's damaged? So that's the exact thing we're saying is, as much as testing is good, you still need to have a brain and you still need to be able to figure out exactly what's going on.